fine we now come to the vapor pressure of liquid solutions we know that a solution is said to be liquid when the when the when the solvent is a liquid so so whenever solvent is a liquid you call it we call it liquid solution is it not so solutions are named after their solvents correct they are named after their solvents why because solvent is a majority component why not okay so we call it liquid solutions and solute can be so so liquid solutions solvent is always a liquid and the solute is is either either a gas or a liquid or a solid okay in all these three cases what you get is a liquid solution fine now this the gas in liquid we just did correct henry's law or Dal dalton's law both of them both of them came to the same conclusion in the end now we'll do liquid in liquid or liquid in solid okay now here solvent is always volatile solvent will be considered volatile and the solute may or may not be volatile you understand what a volatile component is something that evaporates easily volatility okay something which evaporates easily so so we are kind of dealing with binary solutions that we said at the outset so so we'll be either doing liquid in liquid or or solid in liquid correct we'll be doing liquid in liquid or solid in liquid <coughs> so now we come to now we come to vapor pressure of liquid liquid solutions so so in this i discuss the vapor pressure of liquid liquid solutions fine vapor pressure of liquid liquid solutions <coughs> fine now before we go into that let us refresh our ideas of vapor pressure that we have done in class 11th what happens is is if you seal this container fine if you completely seal this container and you put some liquid in it like this and you put liquid some liquid say even water and you put a uh, a uh, pressure meter over that okay you put uh a manometer okay what happens what happen, happens 
you will see that that this this pressure gauge which was which was earlier showing showing zero that will swing a little fine that will swing a little why does that happen because because due to heat since we know that evaporation is a process that continues at a temperature that is less than the boiling point of a, a liquid okay so due to evaporation what happens this <coughs> this container gets gets the molecules of this liquid in vapor form okay in vapor form and this pressure is shown by the fluctuation in the manometer okay now this pressure say p not is called the vapor pressure that is called the vapor pressure okay this p not is called vapor pressure that is the concept of vapor pressure in fact okay you understand that this we have done in class 11th fine now what happens this will come to our help what happens instead of one liquid here you now have two liquids you now have two liquids because we are doing a liquid liquid solution is it not so there is a solvent which is the majority component and there is a solute so so you have two of them here fine so say this is a, a solution this is a solution okay it consists of it consists of two liquids say say a uh, uh, one which i have shown in a black and they are not kind of so distinct they are actually absolutely miscible fine so they 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 have mixed with each other and and obviously by the same by the same process they'll evaporate okay so what happens correct so there are some black particles and some green particles and both of them are now contributing to the pressure here in the vapor phase correct both of them are continuing to the vapor pressure sure so when we have when we have two liquids one and two when we have two liquids one and two <coughs> they do not mark which is the solvent and which is the solute so we leave it like that okay okay so when we have two liquids one and two they evaporate they evaporate and they evaporate and reach an equilibrium one thing that i did not discuss here was what happens so they keep on evaporating up to a point so you'll find this rising up and up and up and at one point it it becomes constant what happens at that time 
that times the the amount of liquid particles that are getting converted into the vapor phase is exactly equal to the to the gaseous phase particles converting into liquid what happens it is not a one way process that we have been seeing this is a dynamic process so this evaporates and some of these they come and hit the they come and hit the surface of the liquid and they they become liquid so that the process of evaporation and condensation that keeps on continuing and the moment that gets balanced you get a steady state okay it is it does not mean that no more evaporation is taking place or no more condensation is taking place it only means that the rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation has become equal okay now so the same thing happens that's why i am saying they reach an equilibrium that means the rate of evaporation of both and the rate of condensation of both becomes the same reach an equilibrium uh, if it's an equilibrium the pressure won't go down it won't go up it won't go up it won't go down you'll find actually if you don't change the temperature this is obviously very sensitive to temperature you understand why mm -hmm. because evaporation itself is sensitive to temperature okay so so at a given temperature the pressure becomes the pressure becomes p total becomes p total that is the total pressure so so maybe if i have a gauge out here okay this gauge reads something say this is p total that it is reading now in gaseous phase we understand the concept of partial pressures okay if p1 and p2 is the partial pressure of due to the two components respectively then what happens then how is p1 related to p total p1 is equal to to x1 times p total this we had this we had derived yesterday if you remember okay if you remember we had derived it yesterday that the partial pressure of one is equal to x1 into p total and the partial pressure of the second is x2 into p total where x1 and x2 is what they are the mole fractions of component 1 and component 2 in gaseous phase in the gaseous phase so so here x1 and x2 are the the mole fractions mole fractions of component 1 and to in the gaseous phase this is important okay the dalton's law, law of partial pressure you should know how to derive that okay fine now now this is as far as 
this is concerned fine this will happen like that now now there is there is a there is a there is a catch here what is the catch the catch is whatever you do you will not be able to find out the you will not be able to find out the you will not be able to find out the mole fraction in the gaseous phase why Yeah, so uh, since it is kind of something that you don't see, you will not be able to find out that. Now what happens? So our aim will be to find out this pressure, okay, this pressure in terms of, of the mole fraction of the liquid that you have. You understand that? Hmm? I have, I have this as oh, x1 and x2 as the mole fraction here, fine, that is my total pressure, fine. So I, I, I'll, I'll, I'd like to have two things, I'd like to have that this should be expressed in terms of P total I can measure, correct, P total I can measure from the gauge. Fine, but x1 and x2 I will not be able to understand, correct, x1 and x2 you will not be able to uh, calculate, fine. So now try to understand, this is after I have measured, fine, what I would like to do is this from a given liquid from a given liquid i'll try to i should be able to guess what will be the contribution of that liquid into into the pressure correct for that you come here for that you come here for the individual huh you take individual x1 hmm hmm for that you come here see if the mole fraction what is what is the total pressure here what is the what is the partial pressure of this liquid here p naught p1 naught correct here the partial pressure of the liquid will be p1 naught they they denote it like that or or by some other method they P1, so, so don't consider it to be P1 to the power R0, right? So this is P0. Now what happens? P1 naught is equal to, what is the mole fraction of this? That, that is a single component. So it is 1. So I can say that it is P1 is equal to P1 naught. 1 into P1 naught. I am saying P1 is equal to 1 into P1 naught. You see that? So somehow it is it is related to the vapor pressure of the fluid at that point. You understand? You understand? Mm -hmm. So now what happens? If I have two liquids into that, then what I say, this is okay, what I say that this P1 will be related to, to the X1 multiplied by P1 naught, P1 naught and my P2 will be equal to X2 uh, multiplied by P2 naught. That is, that is what is called the Rolle's law, Rolle's law. It says that if it was present completely 1, okay, then it will be what? Then it will be 
P1 not. So if two of them come together, they can 